I um, recently published The Lion and the Mouse, and um, certainly that was also um, uh, part of my growing up years. I must have perhaps been told the, the Aesop's fables. Must, I don't think they were read to us children, but I think they were, they were always there. And um, um, I think parents, most importantly, thought about these fables really not as action-packed adventure tales, but more about the morals. Um, but they were, they were an excellent way of, of, of speaking to children and, um, um, and giving them sense of the right direction to go in. And I think perhaps that was what my parents tried to do. I, um, I do remember the action-packed fables, and I remember the characters. Um, there were a number of those uh, fables that you know, uh, has stayed with me, and I can call them up very, very easily and clearly. Um, with almost images of these uh, characters, one of those fables was the lion and the mouse, and I think it's um, it was certainly one of my favorites. And I think perhaps most of us could, if we're going to name a fable that really is stands out, it very well might be the the, the lion and the mouse. And and um, for me, I responded to it in so many ways. I mean, who cannot respond to the majestic lion? I think, I think the lion plays a role in all of our lives as, as something as, as strong. And um, there's something just magical about the, the image of, of especially the male lion with the mane. Um, the mouse. Um, think about how often we find, find the mouse in children's literature. Uh, what a cast of char characters. The small mouse uh, who accidentally finds himself on the back of a resting lion. Um, and the lion, which has the power to do whatever the lion chooses, decides that he would let the mouse go. Not thinking about what way this act of, I guess, kindness, how it might just be returned. Um, the mouse who, after returning to the nest, all of a sudden hears a roar of a trapped lion and decides to lend his skill, the ability to chew through a rope and its large heart to actually free the lion. Now, this is my first, by the way, wordless book, and it did not start out that the intent was not for it to be wordless. As a matter of fact, I thought that the story was so clear in my mind that I would actually start the process of doing uh, thumbnail sketches, and then I would add text later, but since the story was so direct and clear. And it was after the thumbnail sketches and conversations with my editor, and it seemed to me everybody was reading the story um, without the text that I thought, why don't we play this out? Why don't we carry it further in as much as clarifying the pictures so that we could act, add the text, but also that we could see whether in fact it needed the text. So the story is, is um, uh, narrative, visually narratively driven. And, um, uh, and I think that's the, the, what you find in it, you know, not only telling the story of the lion and the mouse, but also the story of um, what attracted me, the Serengeti, the African Serengeti. 